What's going on guys? It's Bromley, Menpower Barbell. Today we're going to fix your Atlas stone load. With Atlas stone loading, the most important thing isn't necessarily how strong you are. It's going to be how practiced you are with the stones because it hinges on a very, very specific technique. When you're running through an Atlas stone loading series, or you're doing an Atlas stone for reps, or even an Atlas stone shoulder, your success is always going to hinge on how efficient you are. This movement is big on technique because better technique means less energy wasted. It means you're going to get it from point A to point B without struggling, without fighting, without ex uh, expending energy. So you're always going to be in an event where either you're trying to do a very, very heavy weight or you're trying to do a uh, lighter weight very, very fast where you're not wasting any time or energy. You're going quickly down the series or uh, something like a, a stone for reps where you have to, in the face of fatigue, continue to perform and cycle through those stone loads without gassing out. If you have any weakness, you are going to waste time and you're not going to do well, or you're going to waste energy and you're going to gas yourself out. So regardless if it's heavy, fast, or endurance based, you need to be on point with your Atlas stone loading. This is not an event where people come and muscle through. You'll have somebody with absolutely no experience come into a strongman meet and they might do very well in a press. If you take an athlete, they might do well in a carry or a vehicle pull. Nobody comes into Atlas stone loading and does well unless they have tons of experience because the guys with experience are the ones that don't waste energy and they can bulldoze through their stone series without any problem. So we're gonna start with loading mechanics, basically the position to get in to get the thing in your lap to begin with. From your lap, we're gonna go over exactly how to load it. And then we're gonna cover some techniques that might add a little bit of quickness or pop to your load. So first things first, you can't load a stone until you have it in your lap. This is about a 260 pound stone. It's pretty well used. I don't have any tacky on my hands right now, but it has years of, of use. So there's little spots where it has a little bit of stick to it. When you go to load, the important thing is that your elbows are straight and you are down underneath the stone, okay? That's a big one. You do not want to be cradled. You don't want your elbows bent. You have to be down the midline. Cut the stone in half. You want to be right down that hemisphere. If you go to pick the stone and it rolls forward or backwards, all that tells you is that you have to adjust your hands either forward or backwards an inch. Don't get frustrated, take a step back, get angry, hype yourself up. If you go to pick that stone and it rolls, stay put, move your hands, try again. So feet need to be right outside of the stone. When we go to load, we think of a Romanian deadlift. That's the position you wanna be in. Do not squat down into the stone. This is an insanely weak position to pick from. Your knees have to be back, your hips have to be back. This is where a good hamstring mobility comes in. And this is actually where you're gonna need a really strong midsection and really strong erectors to brace in that awkward bent over position. So feet right by the stone, arms straight. You're gonna put all of the surface area on your fingers, your palms, and your forearm right here. Now this is key, this is where I struggled for a long time because I do not have good hip or hamstring mobility and I have very short arms, which means I have to bend way over to get to the stone and I'm not very flexible, so that's kind of a challenge. I used to have to rely on tacky so much because I would be short on my ability to get down. I couldn't get my hands all the way underneath, so I'd have to round over. This is a very weak position compared to this. Ideally, when you are locked into the stone, your shoulders are back and you have your, your biceps and your pecs. It's a mix of a, a crush, like a pec fly, and a row, okay? So you wanna be able to get your shoulders back and get as much purchase on that stone as possible. You can't get that if you can't bend down far enough to get your arms under it. So this is where good mobility comes in. Once I started drilling my hamstring work and I got comfortable getting lower and lower into the stone, I was able to get my chest on it. So if you can get your chest to the stone, that's going to tell you that you can get under it long enough, or uh, get under it enough to really get into an advantage pinch where you're not really stretched out. So from right here, RDL position, knees back, butt high, I'm braced. I have my arms right down the middle of the stone, okay? And already I got my shoulders back and I'm crushing. Right here I take a deep breath, brace my abs, and I sit, okay? This is your default position with the stone. You can hold the stone here for a long time. You'll see old videos of Derek Poundstone with a 550 stone sitting on his lap and he'll be playing with it until he finds just the right position. So from the side, 
to go over that one more time. Notice that as I get the stone above my knees, all I have to do is have the top half of the stone over my knees, and then I can push my knees forward and roll the stone back and get upright. So you don't have to pull the thing all the way up into your lap. Half uh, the midpoint of the stone, the center of mass, just has to be above your knees, and then you can roll it in. So once again, we're gonna go over our cues. Okay, feet right outside of the stone. Bigger stones, you have to get out wider. Narrow, narrower stones, you're gonna be a little closer. Arms straight, I'm braced. Knees are back. Get as far under the stone as I can with my hips high, okay? Just like that. So the lap represents the first point of efficiency. Many people will struggle getting it into their lap. They'll either have too much tachyon or they won't have a concept of how to pinch. And the stone will start to slide on each rep, meaning they have to squeeze harder, waste more energy from their upper body. So then in later reps, they get blown up and they'll have a hard time breaking the stone off the ground or keeping a good enough pinch on it to extend on it to begin with. Your upper body is not going to be able to muscle around a 300 pound stone. This is where efficiency counts big time. By grabbing it in the right spot, maintaining enough tension before you even try to pick, and then relying solely on the bigger muscles of your legs and hips to drive it up into your lap, it's going to save you a ton of time, it's going to save you a ton of energy. It's going to make sure you're fresh enough to get those harder, uh, harder reps at either the end of the series or uh, at the end of the minute if you're doing a stone over bar for reps. So you want to drill this. I recommend doing a fair amount of loading without tacky with lighter stones. Remember, don't turn it into a, a fucking challenge stone where your whole workout is you trying to pick a stone that's too heavy without tacky. Get good reps with a lighter stone. You see, we got a large stable of stones. I could do reps with a 150, a 175, a 200, a 220. This is the 260. Just recently, I was able to do our 360 without tacky. That was a big victory for me. But that took a ton of time. That took, took a lot of slow building up over time. I didn't just try the 360 over and over and over until I could do it. All the reps I did with the lighter stones are what dialed in that positioning and that technique so I could move better, so I could move in more stronger positions. So I really got a handle on exactly how I was, how I was doing it. Once you get an idea of exactly where to set up, where your hands go, how to optimize that position, and you start getting into either longer series or heavier stone loads, then tacky is an absolutely great tool to try and get more work. But one mistake you don't want to make is having the tacky do all the work for you. That's very common, and you want to sidestep that whole issue. So once we get it in our lap, now the goal is to get it up. So I always think of the stone as a, a two-step series. It's into your lap, re-grip, up over the bar. There's three big ways to get the stone up and over the bar. The first one is the forklift. If you have a very strong squat, or I would say a very strong front squat, if your legs are powerful, with the stone in your lap, you'll be able to essentially stand up and then at the last minute extend through your hips, lean back, get up on your toes to clear that last little bit over the bar. So what you'll see is guys with very, very strong lower bodies, grip, lift, and then extend at the top. That takes a lot more strength, and I don't recommend that unless you do have a good squat relative to the stone weight that you're using. In position, knees and hips back, under the stone, I'm braced, re-grip, Now one of the issues you're going to run into is how tight of a grip you have on the stone when you go to stand up with it. This is a shitty shirt. As soon as I go up, the shirt pulls down. So I recommend either going shirtless, having a grip shirt, or having a very, very thick cotton shirt with a face on it tied in a knot. You want something rigid. You don't have to worry about give when you go to stand up. Now when I started stone loading, I became good before I got very strong. So one of the tactics I used back then, before I was a 500 pound front squatter, was a pendulum movement. Now this is what you see guys do with very, very heavy stones. So if you're at the point where the weight with this big stone is so far out in front of you, and you don't have the ability to just stand up, because remember, the further out the weight is away from you, the harder it is to manipulate. What you'll see guys do is start with their hips high, and there will be a rocking motion, right? Toes as you come forward, back to your heels as you come down, 
And what you're doing is building up momentum so you can kick with this fast extension all at once. To be honest, it's, it's a kip. That's what it is. It's the exact same pendulum motion that goes into a kipping pull up. So all you strong men that talk shit about CrossFit, half of you are probably kipping your stone loads and you just don't know it. So the idea is you get that front to back motion and because you're on an arc, the horizontal motion carries over to upward momentum, which makes it a lot easier to load heavier stones. Uh, Derek Poundstone would do that. Again, he'd hang out at the bottom with the stone in his lap and he would start to rock and then he would catch the momentum and extend through. It's a, it's a very effective tactic. Uh, it might take a little longer, especially if you have to get a couple of pumps in, but it's a lot better if it's the last stone in the series and that's the difference between you getting enough speed on it to load it or not. So this is what the pendulum looks like. So once again, feet outside the stone, butt high and back, knees back, arms are straight, chest on the stone or as close as you can get so your shoulders are back, okay? Bracing the abs. Now right here, my hips are higher. I'm re-gripping and I'm coming heel to toe. Ideally that happens a bit quicker. Again, grip issue, not the best shirt to load off of, but it looks good, right? Now the third way to load the stone, and this is gonna be a big deal for you guys that have to go through fast stone loading series, like they just had a California Strongest Man this last weekend, is a one motion. Now one motioning a stone is an advanced movement. It's a purple belt movement. If you're new to stone loading, you're not gonna wanna do this right off the bat. You have to get comfortable getting it into your lap, re-gripping and being explosive through your hips before you can really wrap your head around one motioning it off the floor. Now, the reason we utilize this is when we're trying to save time. This is actually less efficient. It takes a lot of energy to one motion a stone. But if you're either so strong or so experienced and you know that either you have a minute to get a ton of reps or you're trying to get a stone series out in 18 seconds or less, the only way you're gonna move fast enough to get that workout is if you one motion the lighter stones. Andrew Mock did a fantastic job of doing this. You can see his video, he did a five stone series run with the heaviest one being 360 pounds in 21 seconds. He beat second place by 12 seconds. Go! Let's do this, Andrew! One. Come on, Andrew! Two, go, go, Let's go, Andrew! Three. Go for your California strongest man, 2019. Come on, Andrew! Yes, Andrew! Yes! Yes! Yes, Andrew! Yes! Yes! Blistering fast pace. He was smart enough to know which stones in the series he could one motion, at what point he fatigues, and exactly when to transition so that he kept the right mix of staying fresh but still moving quick enough to put up a good time. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this to the 180 because I'm not exactly warmed up, I don't have any tacky on, and I'm not proud. So this is gonna be just a brief demonstration. Everything is exactly the same, okay? Footwork is the same, grip's the same. The idea is that as, as you come up, you pull the stone in and you immediately extend the hips through and you're using the hips to drive up, okay? So you're not gonna have quite as good a purchase on the stone with your hands is if you can reset and get dip, uh, deeper. And also if your shirt gives like this one will, you're probably gonna notice it starts to slide earlier. So lower platform, this is gonna be ideal. Lighter stone, this is gonna be ideal. If speed is not an issue, this may be something you wanna overlook. So once again, feet right outside the stone, knees and hips back, okay? It's a lower stone, so I'm not quite gonna be able to get my chest on it, but I still wanna get as low as I can. Okay, I'm under the stone. Brace, pull in. So with this, the important movement is pulling it directly into my torso. So as soon as it's up and I make contact, I'm rocking my hips through and then extending up on my toes, okay? Don't just try to bully it around. Don't just try to do a violent hip extension. As you break off the ground, you are rocking your hips under the stone as quick as possible. So this was our introduction to Atlas Stone Loading. If there's anything I didn't touch, any questions you have, go ahead and leave a comment, all right? I love helping people out on a case-by-case -case basis. And remember to like and subscribe. I wanna be able to put out as much content as I can. And the more of an audience I have, the better content I can put out. So once again, this is Bromley at Empire Barbell. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.